G'day folks, Craig here, Happy New Year, and I've got a review today that I'm going to do on the Medali SP201, that's this one in front. It's a brand new keyboard on the market, it uh, was released I think earlier this year in fact, and we've only just received it here in New Zealand. So I'm going to talk about the SP201 and some of its features, and also in comparison to the Medali SP4200, which I've got there uh, at the top of the picture there as you can see. Uh, I've done a few videos on that one already on my channel, so if you want more in-depth information on this unit here, uh, you can check that out on my channel. Just to recap, the Medali SP4200, which is the one here at the top, that is also known as the Tormann SP5600 over in Europe. And it's also referred to as um, under another brand name called Fame, uh, which you'll find in some parts of the world also. But uh, here in New Zealand, and uh, certainly in the Oceania part of the world, uh, it's referred to as Medali, that's how it's sold. Now this Medali SP201 here, that's called the DP-28, the Tormann DP-28 over in Germany and some other parts of Europe. So just be aware of that, but uh, I'll refer to it as the Medali SP201. Now, also just to clarify, the Medali SP201 also has a, another version which is called the SP201 Plus and you'll find quite a bit of information about that on the internet. The only difference is, is that the SP201 Plus has Bluetooth functionality, which uh, means you can download an app from the App Store and you can control a lot of the features using your phone, uh, iPad, etc. Now I don't really have much use for that and it just complicates things as far as I'm concerned. I just prefer to press buttons and keep it simple. So I'm quite happy just having the SP201. So it's got no Bluetooth function on this particular model. That does mean it is a little bit cheaper, which is good. I actually picked this up for about $700 here in New Zealand, which is about $500 US. Or if you want to put it another way, that's about a quarter ounce of gold at today's prices. So if you've got a quarter ounce of gold lying around, you can swap it for one of these. Now, as you can see, I've already done the unboxing, taken everything out. The box is actually here. You can probably see it. I'll just lift that over. Okay, so that, that's the box that the uh, unit came in. So just your normal, normal standard medallion box. So I've taken everything out just to speed things up. So uh, I've had a bit of a play with this, and I've got to say I'm actually really, really impressed. It, it, it's got a great... A great look and it's got a great sound. In fact, in terms of what makes it better than the SP4200, well, there are a few little things, but mostly that's going to be to do with, I think, the overall sound of the unit and how it performs in a live situation. Um, the SP4200, this one here, as you can see, has a lot more buttons, a lot more bells and whistles. But if you're just looking for a simple stage piano, which has basic functionality, then the SP201 is is pretty much the way to go, I think. It is a little bit cheaper, too, than the SP4200. You save about $100 if you pick up this one here, so that's a little bonus as well. Um, so in terms of what it comes with, well, in the box, you have the usual... Okay, you've got your owner's manual there, which is really just a, just a single page, really pretty basic user guide. And you've got the music rest there, which actually just slots into the back, okay? like that, so that comes with it. Also, you have the switching adapter, okay, for power. That's this little adapter here, it's just your standard one. Unfortunately, Medali have obviously trying to save money again on cable and uh, <laughs> they've gone with a short lead again, which is always frustrating, but you know, it's not that long. I mean, we're talking about, oh, about four feet, so yeah, it's not, not a very long uh, cable, that. I think in some markets over in Europe, I think they sell them with a longer cable, and in fact, a different sort of adapter altogether. But over here, this is what you get. Okay, so that's what's in the box. Um, with the SV4200, it, it's a little bit different. You've got more of a manual, okay, which it's a lot more detailed. But then again, obviously, the SP4200 has a lot more features, and it's got a different sort of music stand or music rest. Okay, and uh, but the switching adapter which comes with uh, both of them, they're exactly the same. Okay, so this here can also be used on this Medelli. So, talking about what, what uh, the SP201 does, well, 
Okay. So in terms of features, well, the SP201 is obviously a lot simpler than the SP4200. So what we've got here in terms of voices or sounds is we've got five buttons with six different sounds under each button. So that gives you 30 different uh, you know, voices or styles or sounds, instruments. Uh, first one's piano, then we've got electric piano, keyboard, synth, and just a mixture of other things, which is like guitar and that sort of stuff. So uh, under piano, that's the one that I'm normally going to use for a live situation. There's four kind of normal piano sounds, and the other two are kind of more geared towards a you know electric type piano or a different type of piano. And then under these buttons here, you've got different types within all those different sections, like harpsichord, clavichord, that sort of thing. They actually sound really good. Um, the piano especially, I find really, really good. I've, even better, I think, possibly, than the Medalli SP4200, but we'll do a bit of a test on that, and you can be the judge. One thing I do like about the SP201 is, is that it has this uh, brilliance control knob here, which is like a almost like a tone control, which just gives you a brighter sound. Uh, that's quite handy, actually, especially when you're plugging into a external PA or some PA systems which perhaps don't have much control on the EQ side of things. If it's just a single speaker, for instance, this gives you a bit of control. So I, th I think that's really cool. Now, on, on the back, I'll just move this out a little way here. Okay. Okay, on the rear of the unit, of course, which will be upside down in your view, but never mind. Look at what they've done. They've actually managed to label everything in white, so we can actually read it. Okay, so there's an upgrade right there. So pretty happy about that. It makes it a lot easier, especially when you're in a dark room or on a dark stage and you're trying to see where you're trying to plug things in. Um, I'll just turn this around. I think that'll be easier. Oh, and by the way, in terms of weight, um, the SP201 is a little bit lighter than the SP4200. This is comes in at 12.5 kilos, uh, the Medalli SP4200 is 13.8. Now that's a difference of obviously 1.3 kilos, which is about three pounds. And it actually makes that, that, that extra three pounds that you save makes quite a bit of difference when you're actually lifting this up. It's, it's, it's actually quite surprising. So that's actually one of the reasons I got this was because I was just looking for something a little bit lighter because it's all about trying to make things easy these days with carting gear around. All right, well, getting back to the back of the unit here. So, as I say, I've had a bit of a play with this, so I've, I can tell you a little bit about what we've got here. From left to right, okay, you've got your USB connection here. That's That actually, this is actually an extra feature that they put on the USB 201, whereby you can use this for your standard MIDI connection. Okay, so if you want to record MIDI sounds or if you want to play MIDI sounds, you just do that by the USB to your laptop computer, for instance. But it also acts as an audio in, so you can take a USB from your laptop, for instance, straight into the back of here, and you can play audio through the speakers. Okay, and that's basically the same feature as this aux in here. You can actually send audio uh, via a standard audio cable, 3.5 millimeter jack, straight in there, but you can use the USB as well. So that's, that's actually a bit of a bonus. You do have your other MIDI out here, which is your um, older style jack. I don't know how many people use that these days. Um, I never use that, but it's there if you need it. Sustain, okay, that's just your sustain pedal, and uh, that's all it does. But of course, there is room underneath here. You've got your unit pedal, which can actually plug into the back here, same as on the SP4200, which gives you the three pedals like you get on a regular piano. Okay, and this, this actually comes with an optional stand, which is exactly the same as the one that comes with this, Medalli SP4200. And that optional stand also comes with uh, three pedals, which plug into this here. All right, but in my case, I've just got the sustain that's going to go in there. Line out, that's just a stereo jack, so you're going to have a stereo quarter inch or 6.5 millimeter jack uh, going to um, a left and right into your mixer or speakers. So that's effectively a Y cable. So single jack out to two jacks to your um, uh, mixing disc or speakers. Auxiliary in is what we've already talked about, which is your smaller jack for audio in via a phone or a laptop or whatever you want to use. And of course your power um, connection there. And that's all there is. So we'll just flip that back around. 
it here, just like that. Now, the Medelli SP4200, I've, I've talked about this in other videos already, but it's got a few extra um, things on here. Most notably, it's got a microphone in, uh, which is this one here. So you can actually plug a microphone and uh, have that going through your keyboard as well, whereas the SP201 doesn't have that. Notice on here, though, of course, it's not labeled in white. It's actually printed here. It's molded in, into the casing, and, and, and it's the same color as the casing, so you can't really read what's there. Okay, so that's why it's great. It's great that they've actually changed that on the SP201. Okay, so that's your connections. So what we'll do is I'll just plug these uh, plug these in, and we'll do a quick sort of sound comparison just on the grand piano, just keeping it simple at the moment. I might do another video later on with more in-depth information on the SP201. But this is just a brief overview. All right, so let's just into there. I've got a different cable that I use for the Medelli SP4200. I've got a longer one which I which I Acquired from somewhere else, so it actually reaches. That's why it's a different color. Okay. Anyway, so both plugged in. Now the great thing about Medallia keyboards is you turn them on, they pretty much come on straight away. There's there's not much delay. So you turn this one on straight up with the acoustic grand piano, and if we turn the SP201 on, just flicks through the lights, and then it's ready to go. Um, of course, there's no display on the SP201. Um, that's a little bit of a downside because, well, we'll talk about that now, actually. One thing you'll discover is that you can easily forget which uh, piano sound you've got set because these colors don't change. Now, I think it would have been really, really good. It would have been actually brilliant if, if they had actually set it up so that by default, um, this will say red. And then if you went to any other sound, it changed to well, what it is now, white, for instance. Because that would mean that you would always know uh, what the first um, default sound, you'd always know that you were set on the default sound. So if it came up, if these initially came up red, but then when you cycled through them, it went to the white color, then at least you would know where the beginning is without actually having to sort of count through, if you know what I mean. So for instance, um, we'll turn that off, we'll just turn it on again. So by default, okay, the sound, so very first one is a German grand, okay? So for instance, if I want to go to a bright German grand, I'll just press this again, and that's changed there. Now, of course, because this is the same color, you could easily forget which one you're on. So then you find yourself having to go through them all to get back to the first one, and uh, the only way you can really tell is just by the sound of it. Okay, so we can go again to Japanese grand, warm grand, uh, this one here is electric grand, and honky tonk. And as you see, those are all the same color. If I press it again, that's back to the home position, if you like. So we're back to the first one, German grand. And as I say, it would have been good if that changed color when you got back to the first one, but however, that's, that's how it is. Right, so that's the pianos. Um, we can quickly look at the other sounds. I mean, we've got electric there. Okay, I can go to the next one just to... I mean, they're quite good, actually. They, they sound pretty good. Um, keyboard sounds. That's a little bit... A little bit harsh. That's a clavichord there. Harpsichord and a few other ones. I won't go through them all now. As I say, I might do another video on that later. Um, synth is things like strings. Okay. Then you've got other sounds. Okay, so there's quite a mixture there. So, uh, you know, all in all, 30, 30 different sounds. There's also 50 different rhythms and metronome. Uh, you can either use it as a metronome or actual, actual drum track. So, I can actually press this. Okay. And change the drum.
I haven't really got to, I haven't figured it out all properly yet, but as I say, there's 50 different uh, um, rhythms there, so quite a few to play around with. Now, um, so in terms of how it sounds just through the speakers, well, okay, if we just put the volume around about the same, so let's say halfway on both of them, and we'll change this brilliance to mid position there, okay. So, that's the SP201. That's the SP4200. Now, in the specifications, these two units are very similar. Okay, they're, okay, the SP4200 is slightly heavier, but it's, it's the same size unit. Okay, pretty much exactly the same. It's slightly wider, slightly higher, but it is pretty much the same size. And it's got the same amplification built in. It's uh, 20 watt, two times 20 watt speakers, I think, driving this. And that's the same as what we've got in the SP201. But I, th this, I find that the SP4200 sounds a lot fuller. And it's got sort of more bass to the sound, whereas the SP201 hasn't got as much bottom end. So I actually prefer the default sound through the speakers on the SP4200. So if that's all you're using it for, you're going to get a better sound out of this unit than you will out of this. But this is still really, really good. And of course, you can crank it up. Change the tone there. And you can get decent volume out of that. It doesn't distort. Okay, so there's no problems with that. You've got this metal grill, which looks really nice. And that just sits over the whole unit here. It doesn't rattle or anything. I've had this problem with the SP4200 where these grills weren't seated correctly and they would actually vibrate and rattle if you turned up the volume too loud. So they've obviously addressed that here in the SP201 and I've not encountered that issue. So that's one plus. But that's how it sounds by default. Uh, slightly better sound on the SP4200 but overall you know, perfectly acceptable on the SP201. And once you plug it into your external PA or amp or whatever, you, you know, that, that'll actually boost up the sound anyway. Okay, so that, that's a simple overview. You can see that on the SP201 we haven't got the pitch bend or anything, okay, so there's no, none of that functionality. The SP4200 has a USB here for backing up your data, um, whereas this doesn't, and I don't think you can back it up through any other means. In terms of changing all the settings on the... Uh, SP201, it's a case of pressing the shift button and then the corresponding key, okay, and that'll do things like change the pitch, for instance, so you can transpose up and down. Uh, you can turn a lot of features on and off, such as, well, to give you an example, if I grab, this is the pedal which I got free with the Medelli. Um, this doesn't actually come with it, they actually threw this in for free. It's actually a Roland pedal. Um, so they tell me, although it doesn't say Roland on it, but they're normally about $50, so I saved a bit of money there. So we'll plug that in and I'll just show you an example of something we can turn on and off using these keys. Now, a little bit of a trick. Here's a little bit of a trick when you're plugging in these um, generic pedals, if you like, or, or just pedals from uh, other makers. You really need to turn the keyboard off before you plug it in, because if you don't, uh, what you'll get is this happening. So, Okay, so your polarity is off there, and so it's around the wrong way, effectively. Now, the way to get around that is to make sure that when you plug this in, make sure that the keyboard's turned off. Okay, so as you can see, well, I've already plugged it in, but what you need to do is either you can either have to reset the keyboard or make sure you plug this in before you turn it on, if that makes sense. So if I turn it on now, okay. It's fine if I press the sustain pedal. You see? That's how it should be. So that's just a little pro tip there. Just make sure that uh, everything's switched off before you plug in the sustain pedal. So, um, you won't be able to hear that, but there's actually a uh, pedal noise which comes through when you press down on the pedal. That's just to mimic what a piano does. I think that's really cool. I'm not, there's no feature like that on the SP4200. Well, none that I know of, um, whereas on the 201 they've put that in, so it just gives it that more authentic sound, authentic piano sound. 
So when I press it, I can actually hear the, the sound of the pedal coming through the speakers as it would on, on a regular acoustic piano. Now, if I don't want that, um, if I just go here, let's turn over the page, I think. Here we go. This gives us a list of things we can adjust or turn on and off. And we've got one here called Damp Noise. Now we can either make it louder or, or softer, or we can just have it on or off. Okay, in this case, I'll just choose the on off uh, function. And in this case, it is the corresponding key, um, which is actually quite hard to read on here, but it's the B flat, this one here. Right, so if I press Shift and the B flat, okay, okay, that's actually turned off the damper noise. So it's no longer coming through the speakers. Now if I press shift and this again, you can hear that little bleep which actually indicates that it's on again. And now I've got the damp noise coming through the speakers. You probably won't be able to hear that. but So that's just an example of something that you can turn on and off. You've got, as I mentioned before, transpose. So you can actually go one, two, three, four, five semitones up and five semitones down. So that's plenty. Uh, you've got other things like string resonance, um, damper resonance, hammer noise, damper noise. Oh, we talked about damper noise. You've got the lid, which can mimic a grand piano lid being either open or closed um, to certain degrees as well, because you've got minus and plus, so you can actually have it half open, for instance, half closed, that sort of thing. Um, so there's quite a few different features that you can adjust there. You've got split, so you can have your keyboard split left and right. So something different on the left to what you've got on the right might be bass here and piano at the top, for instance. Um, one thing I use quite a bit is um, dual layering, so having two sounds at once. Now, one, one downside with the SP201 is that you haven't got these programmable buttons that you've got on the SP4200. See, on the 4200 here, you've got these banks that you can actually assign um, your own settings to, okay, which is really handy because it makes it really easy when you're playing in a live situation to quickly access another sound. Now, on the SP201, for instance, if you want to combine piano and strings, well, you can do that, but you actually then have to um, press both effectively at the same time, like that. And then we've got piano and strings going through. Now, if I want to turn the strings part of that off, I can hold that down, and I'm back to piano. So just doing that one more time. It's piano and strings on. Turn it off, okay, and it's off again. Now, it's a little bit of a trick because if you do that um, and then you, while you're playing a piece of music, you can actually set the split function by mistake. So doing that, you can actually end up not combining the sound, but actually splitting the keyboard. It's it's really something you can only do when, you're, when there's a gap in what you're playing. So if you're doing, and then you want to go to strings, you've really got to pause and set it rather than doing it while you're playing. So that, that's just a little thing that may not bother many people, but it's something that I'll probably encounter if I'm using this in a live situation and I want to put strings and it's going to be, it's going to be a bit trickier than the SP4200. But it's not a deal breaker and it's it's not a huge problem for me. I can, I can, I can deal with that. So back there, just back to piano. So that's how you do that. I think that's all we'll really talk about. If you've got any questions, feel free to let me know. I'm going to keep using this over the next few weeks, get to know it a bit better, see how it um, holds up and how it performs. But I'm, I'm happy with it. I think it's a nice looking keyboard actually. And being that it's just a little bit lighter, easy to carry around, I quite like the fact that it's got this flat surface here so you can actually put things on top. Um, obviously not that, but you know, you could lie something on top like your phone or something and rather than here, which has got the curved speakers, things can easily fall off if you're trying to do that. Having said that, I quite like this has got a recess here for putting your music in, which I think is quite good. And you can also, you know, put your phone in there as well, whereas this doesn't have that. you just got the music stand, which attaches to the back. But, you know, that's, that's just a design difference. It's neither a good nor a bad thing. I have had a bit of a play with the headphones here. I'll just stuff like that. Um... You've actually got uh, two jacks here, which are a 3.5mm and a 6.5mm, or eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch. Um, and that's really cool because it means that, depending on what type of cable you've got with your headphones, you can plug into either one. 
Whereas on the SP4200, you've just got two of the quarter inch jacks there. Okay. All right. Well, happy new year, everybody. Hope, uh, hope it starts off well for you all. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.